this morning I thought I would try to wrap up the uh, series of videos on power electronics with uh, this example. The, uh, what you see over here is a boost converter. Uh, we've talked about that a few times and we've actually looked at a buck converter but we haven't looked at an actual boost converter so far. And you'll notice that it is putting out 12 volts at 200 milliampers. The, uh, the supply is over there, 5 volts at 0.525354, it, it varies. Uh, so, uh, so what are we talking about here? Well, if you remember when we talked about the engineering philosophy I covered a number of topics that I said was uh, were useful to engineers to keep in mind when they're analyzing or designing circuits. So let me refresh your recollection on that and then uh, talk more about this specific boost uh, converter. When we were talking about engineering philosophy, the some of the things that we talked about are the value of using the steady state. That is, for an AC circuit, the steady state is your friend because it, it makes everything computable, at least most things computable, as though it was a DC circuit. So in the steady state, you look at things like average value. I also have previously mentioned that power balance, charge balance, and current balance are important factors in, in uh, power engineering. So what is power balance, charge balance, and current balance? Here are some equivalent circuits and the point that I'm trying to emphasize here is that for example, if you know voltage and current at the input to a circuit, you know the input power. If you know the voltage and current in the output of that same circuit, you know the output power. Now one thing that you know is conserved is power. So the power in is equal to the power out minus the losses in the circuit. For for a few minutes, we're going to assume those losses are zero, but when we come back to the boost converter, we'll see that it runs at about 90% efficiency. So in other words, about 90% of the power in comes out. The other 10% is lost inside the circuit uh, and is converted into heat. Now, if you're working in the steady state or you're working with the DC circuit, then you find that your computations are fairly simple because you're either dealing with resistors or you're dealing with an impedance like a capacitive reactance perhaps in series with or parallel with the resistance and so on. In other words, an AC impedance that for computation purposes can be treated just like a resistor. And what you're interested in is the transfer of power or the transfer of charge. A third thing that uh, we haven't talked about very much, but is the idea of the charge balance in a circuit. That is, anytime there's a capacitor in the circuit, there will be uh, either the charge on the capacitor will be rising or falling or if over a period of time it has an average value, then you can use that average value. But, but to do that, you have to be in the steady state. Similarly with inductors, there is a, a concept called current balance. And if you would like to know a little more about this, I'm not going to try to duplicate uh, what are some excellent videos by uh, Catherine Kim. Uh, she is a professor of electrical engineering who has a YouTube page called Cat Kim Show and she talks about charge balance and current balance. 
I'm not going to try to duplicate those. Instead, what I'm going to do now is go over to the, uh, the boost converter that we're looking at and talk a little bit about how we can use some of these concepts. Here is the schematic of the boost converter that we uh, were looking at earlier. This is the voltage in, which you may recall was 5 volts. This is the voltage out, which you may recall was 12 volts. And so uh, you may have noticed that we had about 0.53 amps on the input and about 0.2 amps on the output. The way this circuit works is there's an oscillator inside this chip that runs at about uh, 1.2 megahertz. What it is doing is putting current into this inductor that stores charge and when this circuit reaches steady state the average current through that inductor becomes the steady state current and at that point you can calculate things such as the the uh, current balance. In other words, we know that the total current flowing to the output has to come from the input, but it comes from the input in two different ways. One is through the inductor and the uh, Schottky diode directly to the output, and then when this uh, turns off, what it does is use the stored charge in this inductor to supply the output current during the time that the uh, input is turned off. And it does that inside the 3608. And we've earlier looked at a simpler version of a boost converter in which we just used a simple transistor and a diode. Uh, this is a little more complicated because it has a feedback path. You tap off a portion of the output voltage, and this, by the way, is a symbol for a potentiometer. This just varies from 100K at the top to zero at the bottom, and taps off a part of the output voltage to enable the 3608 to adjust the uh, its pulse width and total time on, time off, so that you maintain the voltage. So basically this is the voltage adjust, and I have it set so that the output voltage is uh, 12 volts. By the way, the inductor on the data sheet for the 3608 shows that the inductor can be between 4.7 and 22 microhenries. Now that same uh, website or a YouTube channel that I talked about earlier, the uh, Cat Kim show, she talks about how you compute the inductance for a boost converter in one of her videos. But for today, what I really want to talk about is efficiency. Here is an example of the 3608, and this is shown without the actual uh, circuit values. But over here, you see an efficiency chart that basically shows that with a V in of 5 volts and a V out of 12 volts, the circuit should be roughly 92 or 93 percent efficient at 200 milliamps of output current. Well, that's why I chose 200 milliamps here. It's also why I chose 5 volts in and 12 volts out. Now, here are the values that I actually got. 5 volts in at 0.53 amps, or a total of 2.65 watts in, and an output uh, power of 12 volts times 0.2, or 200 milliamps, or 2.4 watts out. So if you divide the output uh, power by the input power, you'll find that it's about 90.5%. So 
So that's not quite as good as the, uh, the chart you see above, but it's fairly close and it's fairly typical for these kinds of, uh, of DC to DC converters. So, in summary, what we're talking about here is you can use concepts like power out equals power in times efficiency. So with the power in of 2.65 watts multiplied by an efficiency of 90.5%, we get the power out. Or in reverse, if you divide the power out by the power in, you get the efficiency. I hope this, this concrete example of the use of conservation of power, for example, would be useful if you're trying to figure out a way to kind of know where to start when analyzing or designing circuits like this. Once again, engineering is a, uh, a profession in which approximation, getting close enough, is the goal. You don't have to calculate things out to the 23rd decimal place. All you have to do is meet the objectives of the project. And if you can do so within the economic constraints that you have uh, set up, you will be a successful engineer. I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you've enjoyed the whole series on power electronics. I'm going to be shifting gears for a while and uh, looking at some new things, but the uh, power electronics today, in large part because of their so much battery powered equipment, has become as big a part of the engineering design as anything else. And a person who is good at efficient power conversion will be, well, let's just say, you won't have any trouble finding a job. So, hope you enjoyed it. Look forward to some more things in the future. Stay safe. Have a nice day.